What a week at the Rugby World Cup and you are at the right place if you need your update, your daily fix of what happened on social media, results and the drama that's going on at the Rugby World Cup at the moment in Japan. It's in touch and welcome to it. Thanks for joining us. I'm Katurlo. This is Sam Ludidi. He's dancing throughout Thursday because there's no rugby to watch. So no, to I've got to kill the energy somewhere. I won't be yelling at the TV this weekend. So I'm going <laughs> to find some other way to burn my energy. But uh, it's been an interesting start to the World Cup, even from the very first whistle where there were complaints about referees and interdisciplinary issues and now other things as well, like nature playing her part in the World Cup too. And that's the thing, is this year's World Cup, it's all on social media. You can see everything. The Rugby World Cup's been great on their account, and so have the players as well. We've got a little bit from Skull Fritz and a few other players as well. It's all going down on In Touch today. And we've got a very lacquer guest, eh? Yeah, he's quite a bit of a funny guy. Yeah, I've been laughing <laughs> since we actually walked into the studio. So we'll catch up with our guest in just a few moments. But before we do get to our guest, Katua mentioned that there's social media going on, post our uh, ex-players rather and current players that are doing things on social media. One thing that you will not have seen is what Tobani Bobo was doing along with one of his former Love teammates this. <laughs> in the form of uh, good old Ryan Kankowski. Let's have a look and see what they got up to. Somehow something looks wrong with that sumo. I'm pretty sure that it's got something to do with this and not, yeah. <laughs> well, there's plenty more to come <laughs> from what Bobs and the Kanko. I'm clipping this, so this is going viral, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, we'll catch up with Bobs and Kanko again a little bit later on in the show. But we're at that part where we're going to catch up with what's been happening in social media. Yes, and we mentioned it's a very dramatic World Cup and it's getting even, it's leveled up. Unfortunately, two games have been cancelled due uh, Typhoon Hagibus, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, New Zealand versus Italy, England versus France, so big games, but the Typhoon is very obviously very dangerous uh, and World Cup, uh, well the World Rugby COO Alan Gilpin had a chat about it a bit earlier today at a press conference, but two games have been called off. It's quite, it's, it's, it's hectic because Italy and the All Blacks, big game, England, France, big game. And then there's still the possibility of Sunday's matches also being yes. called off, which causes a lot of problems for the Scottish side because they're facing Japan uh, on Sunday in the final group stage game. And if that doesn't work out, it means that they don't qualify. Yeah. And all three of those teams in that pool A can qualify for that knockout stage. So a bit of both on social media. People are upset that World Rugby didn't do something for contingency plan, but I'm sure they've gone through every possible scenario in their minds. As you can see, uh, the COO saying, please, if you're in Japan, listen to the warning, stay inside during this. Uh, weekend's storm or typhoon. So yeah, good luck to everyone there and I hope everyone is safe. It's not a time to be a storm chaser at all. Like put the reality TV Hashtag cameras dad away. jokes, right? And uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll leave the jokes to Trevor. Um, <laughs> other things that are happening at the Rugby World Cup as well. Since Damien Willems has joined the Springbok camp, uh, Paul Ruiz have been out in the headlines, haven't they? Representing. Yeah. I think it's about six players in the squad at the moment. And it's cool to say that Skulk Brits is 38, Damien Willems is 21, so the age gap is 17 years. To put it in perspective, though, at the same school, Damien Willems was one year old 
when um, Scott Britz matriculated. <laughs> wow, that <laughs> is that? Immense. That is absolutely extraordinary. I don't think I know anybody who was in my school when I was one. Well, maybe you'll find them in your next Springbok team, your, I don't know, social media mm. team. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Other things happening at the Rugby World Cup, the quickest hat-trick in the history How cool of is this? the World Cup rugby. Gobis Reinach, you beauty. And he posted something about him and his dad today as well on social media, so make sure you go follow these guys. They are having a lot of fun, but focused as well. And then also Bongi Munambi making headlines for the right reasons. Yeah, it was very, very pinpoint accurate. Uh, he's probably got a laser attached to the ball every time it yeah. comes in from the lineout, but uh, I'm going to go find him somewhere and I'm going to learn his tools and learn his trades. A few of the scrum halves in World Rugby could learn for that kind of passing. And it's cool because um, basically, you know, before the World Cup, everyone put the Primox in the A and the B team, and the B team is what caught Brian O'Driscoll's um, attention. As you can see, he'd rather face the second team uh, in the quarterfinals than the first team. Making things very interesting, showing the depth we have in South Africa, right? It was Reinach's three tries in a total time of 11 minutes. That was absolutely absurd. It was absurd. It was crazy. It was absolutely awesome to see. Now, Kubis Reinach, of course, in the news. And then also, we played against Canada. Unfortunately, there's a red card in that match. Where it was 15 against 14 men. Unfortunate to see that. But Canada stepped up and they apologised. Yeah, I just want to come in and apologise for my red card tonight. Um, yeah, pretty gutted about it, but um, yeah, I just want to come in and apologise to you guys face to face and uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the tournament. Fabulous you sportsmanship you. showed you, by the Canadians. Yeah, yeah okay? that's incredible sportsmanship that has been shown there. And uh, we hope that kind of thing continues throughout the knockout stages of the Rugby World Cup. But it's not the only thing that's happening in the World Cup. Some Springbok supporters are doing the most. And trending. I love this. Look at this. Bring it, yeah. <laughs> a bit of a do magic it? Do what it happen when you do it now? What? If what? Okay. No, still we, we have other magic in studio, set. not not yeah. that type of magic. It's fine. Well, yeah. well tried. We'll leave it to the the experts for supporters over there, right? <laughs> and then another thing coming out of the Rugby World Cup again, coming from the Springboks, has been my absolute favourite Kutworth yeah, of the competition, this. and uh, it's good old Skulk Brits. And he's just been smiles, he's been chipper, he's been really the light that the Springboks have needed. And it's an ongoing joke between my friends and I. Every <laughs> time you see Skulk on camera, he's smiling, he's bowing. He just looks like a guy who's happy to be there. And he's not going to let this oak forget he couldn't get into that show. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love the sportsmanship, the gears at the Rugby World Cup. And uh, it will continue throughout and obviously we'll bring you all of it here on In Touch. But we've got a fabulous guest lineup for you today. Yeah, and I did mention Trevor is in studio. His name is Trevor Gumbi. And we've had him in terms of Super Sport Rugby a little bit earlier on in the week. He had a chance to catch up with uh, Stanton Sticker Friedrichs. And they were picking apart the game of rugby. This should be interesting. Let's have a look. As you see, I'm representing South Africa, Stigger. Yeah, yeah. You might have before, but I yeah. represent this South African team. Look at that. Look at that. What a dive. Okay, if we're taking more dives <laughs> than that. <laughs> so if we could just take it back, I'm going to explain right. to you exactly why he managed to get through that because, you see, so normally what we should have is uh, just there, just there. Thank you. Let it run. You see the goalkeeper's coming out before you <laughs> shoot. The goal, the goalkeeper. Is that, he looks a bit like Kuna, and he takes a bit of a dive. So you talk about dives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and I think that's exactly where, where we went wrong. With, All right. With, with that okay. situation. Yeah. As a middle fielder yeah. yourself, if we take it back, we take it back just a little bit to here. This yeah. is where the space was. As a middle fielder, how would you have defended against this? Right so, in the middle of the so, park. So the space is not. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. As a midfielder. The space is where he went through. Yeah. Stick so with me. Sometimes you just got to let it go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just got to let it go, yeah. Okay. So I think that's what, what, what we decided. Because we've got all black boots and we're together. Uh -huh. you, you know what I'm saying? So we're just like, okay. And we'll, that we'll absurdity up, yeah. is why he was on loan to Super Sport. <laughs> More fun like that on Midweek Ball on Supersport. Do check it out. And of course, Trevor Gumby is our guest today. Welcome. Is that the same outfit today? Have you continued? It's very important in rugby, so. Yeah, it's uh, my Supersport uniform. <laughs> I did change the shoes, though. Well done. You threw us off there, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Trevor, you. Trevor, welcome. Um, Thanks you've for had me. quite a year. Um, before we get to the rugby, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. I'm having a great time. 
Yeah. It was great, fabulous stuff. Now, the Rugby World Cup, what have you thought so far? Springboks? All right, look, there's a conspiracy happening, okay? Ooh, okay. Listen, World Rugby wants to see Japan through to the playoffs. Uh -huh. So much so that, you know, the Japanese are very smart, and I know, I've got it on good authority, they've got a, a, a weather-making machine. So this typhoon is man-made. Why at this particular time, mm -hmm. when Japan can go through and not face Scotland and then face us? Big conspiracy. And okay. then the Japanese authorities say, stay indoors, right? Yes. Does the it's city, dangerous. Does the city of Toyota not have a stadium that closes? <gasps> They'd be playing indoors. So what? <laughs> Yum, I don't even know what to say. Mind blown. Okay? It was here. Yeah. First on In Touch, guys. Yeah. This, is, this yeah. is the truth. And don't read too much into that Canadian apology. If you've ever been to Canada, <laughs> I've been to Canada, they say sorry for the smallest reasons. You like, good morning. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you, we South Africans don't apologize, eh? Sorry? We just give beer. We don't apologize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he didn't take the beer. Did you notice that? He came in to apologize in the change room, he was offered a beer, and then he gave it back at the end. I wonder why. What's the clue? What's wrong with Japanese beer? Have you had Japanese beer before? No. I've had sake. And how was that? I had it on the Cape Flats from a inflatable silver thing. <laughs> sake, right? <laughs> I was like, this wine is sucky. Okay, let's hope the Springboks aren't sucky the rest of the tournament. Oh, no. What do you be. think of the team so far? Uh, Rusty Rasmus is an extremely intelligent man, and he hasn't shown his entire hand yet. He's got something up his sleeve. Um, so much so that uh, a, a, a couple of years ago, when um, he was versing another team, um, the team actually did their huddle at halftime on the field because yeah. they thought, there's no way this guy can tell all our plays like this. He must have bugged the change room, you know? So he's just a genius and we still have a lot to see out of this team. Have you met Rassi before? No, no, I just love him from afar. <laughs> Rassi, Trevor wants to meet you. Come now. Come now, man, Rassi. Come out for What would you say to Rassi? To Rusty, I don't know. I think I just. Are you nervous now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to imagine it. I don't know. Rusty Rusty just walks up. What would you say to him? Oh, I'd probably shed a tear. <laughs> I, I honestly would. I wouldn't know what to say. All right. What are you? Firstly, rugby and Trevor. Where did those two meet? Oh, all my life. Uh, starting school from class one. What grade is that? Uh, I started playing rugby from a very young age. In primary school, I was a forward because I was kind of pudgy. Uh, I've played most positions, uh, inside, uh, uh, tight end prop, uh, uh, loose head prop, I've, I've played, oh, then I played centre, uh, and uh, uh, I played fullback the one game. So all 15 positions, in other words? Not all Not of lock, them. Not lock, Yeah, maybe. not lock, yeah. Okay. I'm a bit height <laughs> disadvantaged, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you could swap play, uh, places with a player in World Rugby, who would you swap places with? Just for a day? Just for a day? Sia Colisi. Have you seen Rachel? <laughs> oh, did you mean on the field of play? I mean on the field oh, of play. Oh, Malcolm Marks. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm Marks, all right. Uh, the player. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. And then what, do you think the box can do it all the way? I believe so. I believe so. And uh, I'm just like every other South African supporter, we are all heart. And yes. we believe the underdog is always on top and we will make it. We still believe in the Madiba magic and yeah. We believe it's going to happen. I love that. Yeah. So, Trey, what's coming up for you for the rest of 2019? Except, obviously, celebrating with the box when they come back. Celebrating with the box, yeah, when they come back. And uh, continuing to uh, live vicariously through my son's sports career. <laughs> I read this. I wanted to ask you about yeah. it. So, what are they doing that you are just... Oh, they, they go do it. Amazing. Uh, uh, they've been first team uh, um, swimming, uh, hockey, uh, water polo, wow. uh, rugby. They played for... Uh, the uh, West, West Gauteng, yeah. Yeah, so they're very good. And I just, like, live vicariously to them. So you're one of those dads next to the field that yeah. screams at the ref and screams at all the kids? I'm on the field. Woo! <laughs> Have you ever become a ref, maybe to really be on? No, I'm, I'm far too passionate about that. Are you more yeah. biased there? I'd freak out. <laughs> yeah. Was there ever a moment where your child was like, I said, Bleef, just please just stop, Dad? Oh, they were always like, oh, Dad, <laughs> stop. I think it was the one time I was running along the edge of the swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah, then after that, he's just like, just leave. And you're not even allowed to be in, uh, there, right? They Doing can't it? stop me. I paid the school fees <laughs> that one month.
<laughs> that one month. <laughs> I had all the right to be there. Okay, fair enough. That's good. But that's <laughs> nice that you're a passionate dad, a passionate South African supporter. Right. Um, and what, in terms of professional comedy, comedy shows coming up, what's coming up for you? Uh, I'm doing uh, my last uh, tour of uh, the divorce tour, and uh, I've got midlife crisis uh, on the go. And yeah, just uh, now for the festive season, doing year end functions for companies, and lots of fun. Yes, you're enjoying it, eh? Yeah. Are you looking forward to 2020? This year's been fire. <laughs> yeah, I want to carry on for a bit longer. October's gone so fast. Yes, it has gone fast. <laughs> I don't want it to go past because it means the Rugby World Cup is coming to an end. No. But we've still got a couple of weeks to go. So Trevor, yeah. I'm very excited. Trevor picked his starting 15 full of celebs. Yeah. So we're going to get to that now. But here's Trevor and Bobes. They continued with their sumo wrestling today. Well, that was a bit of fun. I mean, sumo wrestling, I mean... Did you get in a bit of that in Japan? Yeah, sumo in Japan is like it's like a cult following. Yeah. You know, so we used to obviously use it as training. You know, even Super Rugby this side used to do this training. But you know, you get there, try and get tickets. They booked out months in advance. It's it's like almost impossible to get tickets unless you know someone in the game. And especially now, how do you approach it? I mean, from your experience, when you as a tourist going to Japan, things you know, to look out for. It's. it's you know, you know, going back to the day, you know, we lost mm. the last World Cup. Um, Brighton. You know, I was very fortunate. Everyone forgot about that. No, you know, I was very fortunate to be in Japan in a pub. Oh yeah. You know, um, making fun of the Japanese guys before kickoff. So it was quite a humbling <laughs> experience. You know, and then after we lost, you know, it was obviously a tough one to take. But you'd get onto public transport, you'd sure. walk around, and you'd actually see people reading the rules of rugby. Oh yeah. You know, so. Supporters in a stadium went from 5,000 people that were only company employees to having sold out stadiums, you know, 45,000 people, like overnight. So, you know, what that did for Japan and rugby in Japan was massive, you know, so I can only imagine what this World Cup's doing. You know, everyone asks you, like, what's Japan like? And you actually can't put it into words. You've got to say, you know, you've got to go there. You've got to see how efficient they are, whether it's someone cleaning the tables or cleaning the street mm. or you know, CEO of an office, they all in their space and they 100% committed to their job. You know, they all have smiles. Yeah. This is making coffee is my job. But taking I'm pride, do it be the best in the world at doing it. Yes. And that's, you know, if there's anything I could take back from Japan and you know what some of the senior players told yeah. me was, you know, it's, Japan is all about respect. You know, sure. Senpai, kohai, like senior, junior. To know your place. Mm. You know, if you go to Japan and you show everyone respect, you'll see how they just completely change, you know, around you. Um, you'll see a lot of the Japanese will end up cleaning the whole stadium after a rugby game. True. They don't just leave things lying around. Yeah. You know, just have respect for the culture. And advice for a boy who's from, let's say, someone's coming from Boxburg and they're going to Japan for the World Cup now, how to behave and how to act? Um, you know, cover up your tattoos. What is, that? what is that about, actually, covering up the tattoos? Any public place, you know, if you went to an onsen, which is like a public bath, Yeah. you know, you'd rock up there, and the older the public baths, the more strict they tend to be, you know, the more, I want to say rural, but it's the old school they are. What, what, what is that about the public bath? It's, I mean, it's, no, it's epic, dude. Like, you go there, it's hot springs, you're sitting in the, the rocks, it's, yeah. it's like a jacuzzi, but a... It's like a spa that is yes, like... But you know, it's only men on one section, women on the other side. Um, you go there and you're literally in the open. You, you can be in the mm. snow and the water's like perfect. It's, it's coming off the mountains. I don't know. It's really an amazing country. I think I'm ready to go now. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Maybe I'll join you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. So we know Trevor's a man of many talents. He even masked himself as Ryan Kinkowski. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Bobes and Ryan for uh, chatting about Japan. Obviously, Ryan being there for a, a long time. Uh, Trevor, is your next stop Japan just to go visit? Because it sounds so great. It sounds like it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I might want to go there. Despite the conspiracy theories. It's, it's not a conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's a theory because there are weather-making machines. Please Google it. Everybody at home, Google weather-making machines. I saw it on Twitter. OK, hold on, hold on, Trevor. I'm going to Google now. We need to get to the part of the show where oh. we're looking at your Celebrity 15. Oh, yeah. Um, unless you've got an expert of conspiracy theorists inside the team as well, no? 
No, no. Okay, cool. Then let's have a look at that uh, celebrity 15 that uh, Trevor has cooked himself up. And uh, some interesting things out at the front. The front row, we're going to start off with the props and the hooker as well. And uh, we see that Anel Mdota, she's playing at the number three, the tight head prop position, uh, along with Helen Zillard hooker and uh, Celeste and Julie there as well. Um, making up the front row. We're going to blow straight past the, that. The reason for that is, is a three powerful South African woman who everybody backs down from. That's a good, Fair enough. good explanation. Yeah. Fair put, enough. put South African woman first and they will lead us to victory. There we go. So second row. And then into the second row, making up the tight five, Shaq O'Neal. Oh, that's a rather obvious one. Yeah. Uh, but I think <laughs> you've got Loiso at, at, at the other lock. Why? They are almost the same height and Luiso plays uh, basketball, so he's good with the hands. He's got good hands. Yeah, we win every line out that way. Right. FS name one kind of offloads that kind of No one's going to get yeah. past those two. Yeah, yeah, making up the back trio Ooh, I like this. inside that scrum. Tom Cruise. Right. Talk us through that. Just to confuse the enemy with his talk of Scientology, it's like <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> and, he likes uh, to jump on couches as well, so it makes sense. Absolutely. So, you're going to have a problem in absolutely. the rights, right, then. You're, your flank is going to be jumping on people's backs. But anyway, yeah. I'm just saying. Okay. Moving on to the halfback pairing. So far. I like yeah. it. Halfback pairing. Let's see what we've got at nine and ten. Uh, what's that? Uh, oh, uh, Peter Dinklage. I, I've heard of not halfbacks need to be nippy characters, but exactly. Peter Dinklage and he's a, a, a short person, so every tackle is going to be a high tackle. <laughs> Not even the French refs can dismiss that. <laughs> but he must come in his Game of Thrones outfit, though. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And then you've got some easy at 10. What's that for? We do need a little bit of flamboyance in that position, right? Love that. Flair. Flair, yeah. Controlling the game. See, also and a then... bit of South African and international flavour. I like it. Absolutely. I see something looking at uh, number 12 and uh, number 13. Uh, need to go. Is that Trevor? Is that, is that Trevor Gumbi? Here we go. And at <laughs> outside centre, we have Trevor Gumbi. <laughs> Outside centre, Trevor Gumby. I'm assuming the captain of the team as well. Yeah, if I have to, if if my country calls on me, <laughs> I'll have to you, oblige. You did say you wanted to swap a CS, yeah, so exactly. that's your chance. Yeah. And then making up the back three, the left, right wings, and uh, full back as well. David Beckham's in there. Right. Clearance. Imagine bending it like Beckham and it uh, like, goes over the touchdown and just like... Back in. Is Kevin Hart going to be able to contest out of the Hubble? Look, he's amazing to watch. Uh, the, the, the opposition is just going to be in awe and just like be spellbound watching him run past. But high ball, no. <laughs> it will just have, like, he can get all, any grubber he wants. <laughs> you know? He'll people talk always his way think, into it. People always think, oh, he's so Hollywood, but he's very down to earth. Oh, okay. And then we've got the entire squad as well, <laughs> just to run through it too. And uh, it's going to pop up just behind us. And uh, Trevor, are you happy with your team? Is this the ideal squad for you? Ideal, ideal. What do you think of it? Not too shabby. Um, now that you've explained the way that you've got right. about selecting your side, yes. you've got to back the Boichi. Yeah, amazing, right? I like it too. Do you think this team can beat Japan? It's unpredictable Japan. Any day. Any day, all day. Uh, yeah, just take out every South African from the Japanese team, man. We can. <laughs> Lapis Labouche as well, hey? Lapis Is it Lapis Labouche? Labouche is the Aussies have dubbed Lapis yeah. <laughs> uh, Tell me, who would you rather face if you were the Springboks, uh, Japan or Ireland, in the quarterfinals? Quite honestly, Japan. Japan looks amazing right now, but the Irish are the Irish. I agree. Yeah. With well, that being said, we've got to give it a name and call it a day. Time is running away with us. Uh, no. Uh, no. Just like Peter Dinklage. What? No. What, what time is it? You need to we find your, you need to find yourself a conspiracy theorist who can rewind time. Please yeah. Google. <laughs> Maybe it's happening as we speak. Guys, I saw. Oh, they can make whether there was a building and then the, the, the turbine went off and then a cloud formed. Uh, and okay. It, it was a colonial <laughs> nimbus cloud. I remember from geography. That's the long, barrelly one, and it started raining. We're gonna leave Trevor to his conspiracy we'll theories. We'll think about this. Uh, yeah, you can catch up with us on social media using the hashtag SS Rugby. It's been an absolute pleasure chilling with you today, and uh, we're back again, same time, same place next week. Have yourself a fantastic weekend. Goodbye.